In today's exploration of cybersecurity tech news, ever since the war in Ukraine kicked off, the hacktivism world has been on overdrive. It seems that every few hours we hear of some hack being committed by Anonymous or some hacktivist group. Some of the hacks are rather interesting, but others have just been sensationalized by the media. But who carries out these attacks? Well, as this cyber group tracker shows, most of the hacktivist groups that have appeared over the past couple of weeks are on the side of the Ukrainians, against Putin and his invading Russian forces. But some of them are on the side of the Russians. These guys have been trying to hack, DDoS, and in general, just cause problems for Ukrainian computer systems. Now, I wanted to talk to these guys, find out what motivates them to attack Ukraine, when most people would agree it's their country, Russia, that's clearly in the wrong. Now, I don't want to start an argument with them, but just pick their brains a little. As it turns out, I didn't have to reach out to any of these groups because they've been watching my videos apparently and reaching out to me. I recently received an email claiming to be from the Russian hacking group, The Red Bandits, asking me to follow them on Twitter. Now, I get a bunch of random emails like this, so I was about to delete it until I realized it was sent from a Ukrainian government email address. I of course did my due diligence and the email was not spoofed, as in it did actually come from a Ukrainian government mail server. I checked them out on Twitter to find the Red Bandits had been responsible for DDoSing Ukrainian military websites, hacking Ukrainian police dash cams, and of course, they pwned the Ukrainian government's mail server that they used to email me and apparently 500,000 other people. This group has only popped up in the last couple of weeks, so there isn't much information on them, though one article suggests the Red Bandits is just a front for Russian intelligence. Naturally, I was intrigued, and so I slid into their DMs to see if I could get an interview. They agreed and a representative of the Red Bandits hopped on a call with me. Now the guy I spoke to was using a voice changer because, well, of course he was. He didn't tell me his name, but just that he wanted to be called Bandit. We spoke for about 45 minutes and firstly, I wanted to build some context around himself and the group itself. Bandit apparently works in a Russian cybersecurity company. He's a security analyst and in fact, he was talking to me on his lunch break. Red Bandits is made up of six people, a couple of the members he knows IRL, the others he met online. Now, Red Bandits' Twitter says they're a cybercrime group rather than a hacktivist group, and so I asked him about that. Bandits explains they have previously been engaged in cybercrime. He wouldn't tell me any specifics, but said that they do that under a different group name, so that if they ever get caught, they're only charged for the crimes committed under one alias. Now, judging from how new this particular alias of theirs is, I'd guess they're pretty new to hacktivism and that they mostly engage in cybercrime. So at this point, I wanted to get to the hacktivism side of things, focus the interview on their motivations for targeting Ukraine and what exactly it is they hope to achieve. I had kind of painted a picture in my head that Bandit was some kind of avid Putin admirer who just so happens to have the skills required to mess with Ukraine on the cyber front. But this mental image was completely wrong. His actual motives are arguably more confusing. Bandit says that Putin isn't someone he'd want to be friends with. He thinks the invasion of Ukraine was a step too far and in his own words, out of order. He even adds that he doesn't hate Ukrainians in the slightest. So I was confused, why then attack Ukraine? Well, this seems to be a case of jingoism, as in extreme patriotism. He said to me, and in a tweet, we support our country even if it is wrong. He claims he's motivated by protecting Russia, seemingly for no other reason than that's the country he happens to live in. And that whilst he wouldn't want to be friends with Putin, in his own words, he does respect the guy as a president and as a citizen. I realize this rationale isn't going to satisfy most people, but this is his position and this is just what he told me. Bandit adds that he wants the war to stop and he feels bad for everyone involved, but that his actions are only in response to cyber attacks against Russia and says, I will defend my country like I will defend my home. I'm not going to allow my country to be hacked. Bandit made it very clear that he only ever targets Ukrainian officials and the government. Though, I wanted to get a sense of whether he had any other red lines in his operations. And so I asked him if, in some hypothetical scenario, if he thought one of his operations would result in the deaths of Ukrainians, would he still continue the operation? After a five second pause, and yes, I, I counted, he replied, no comment. Let me know down below, what do you think of that response? Bandit said he's been receiving a lot of hate messages. I wasn't particularly shocked by that. However, he was confused. In his words, he doesn't understand why they message him. He has sympathy, but he's not out there shooting missiles, so they don't have to worry about him. 
I asked Brandit what can people expect from this group and what he hopes to realistically achieve. To this, he didn't have any clear answer. It doesn't sound like anything is in the pipeline. This makes me question how committed Red Bandits are to their hacktivism. In the past couple of days, they've been using their platform on Twitter to advertise for cybercrime related jobs. And they also tweeted, we've seen a chance to make millions. We're going to take that chance. It sounds like the hacktivism is a bit of a side project for them. And there are questions surrounding some of their operations. For example, it's been pointed out that those police dash cams they supposedly hacked are just public streams you can search for on Shodan and that they aren't even police, but rather private security guards. But their apparent hack of the Ukrainian government mail server does still stand. However, I do need to stress how hard it is to verify this stuff. Did they really hack the mail server itself and email 500,000 people? Or did they just compromise one guy's email address and use it to message me? This is a guessing game. In another tweet, they claimed to have gained access to an industrial control system. It seems like some kind of a water pump, but again, how do you verify a screenshot? I'm not saying they didn't do any of this stuff, only that I can't verify it. And with people's interest in hacktivism going through the roof the past week or so, a lot of the claims out there on the interwebs will just be from people merely looking for clout. Some things can be verified though. For example, a week ago, I received an email from Putin at Kremlin.ru. Supposedly, someone hacked Putin's own email address and used it to message me. The group behind this said they had compromised Putin's personal mail server. But after some basic digging, I discovered the email was spoofed, as in the sender address was completely fake. Please let me know in the comments, what do you think of the Red Bandits and their motivations? Also, in the last couple of days, I interviewed a pro-Ukrainian hacktivist group. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as my video on them goes live. This video was made possible by Altium Designer, the world's number one PCB design software. 35 years of innovation and development has gone into this bit of kit and it really shows. Nothing else I've used comes close to the sheer breadth and depth of features. If you dabble in PCB design at all, you have to give this a go. The routing engine even just in of itself is sublime. Grab your free trial via the link in the video description. As always, thank you for watching and you know the drill. Tickle that notification bell and follow me on the Instagrams for behind the scenes update and I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.